Vulva lichen planus. Etiology Lichen planus is an inflammatory disorder with manifestations on the skin, genital, and oral mucous membranes. More rarely, it affects the lacrimal duct, esophagus, and external auditory meatus. It is an inflammatory condition of unknown pathogenesis, but it is probably an immunological response by T cells activated by as yet unidentified antigens. Weak circulating basement membrane zone antibodies have been shown to be present in 61% of patients with erosive lichen planus of the vulva. In some cases, there is overlap between lichen sclerosis and lichen planus. Clinical features Symptoms Itch or irritation, soreness, dyspareunia, urinary symptoms, vaginal discharge, and can be asymptomatic. Signs The anogenital lesions of lichen planus may be divided into three main groups according to their clinical presentation. Number 1. Classical Typical papules will be found on the keratinized anogenital skin with or without striae on the inner aspect of the vulva. Hyperpigmentation frequently follows the resolution, particularly those with dark skin. This type of lichen planus may be asymptomatic. Vulva lesions were found in 19 out of 37 women with cutaneous lichen planus, with 4 of the 19 having had no symptoms. Number 2. Hypertrophic These lesions are relatively rare and can be difficult to diagnose. They particularly affect the perineum and perianal area, presenting as tecan warty plaques, which may become ulcerated, infected, and painful. Because of these features, they can mimic malignancy. They do not appear to be accompanied by vaginal lesions. Number 3. Erosive This is the most common subtype to cause vulval symptoms. The mucosal surfaces are eroded. At the edges of the erosions, the epithelium is mauve and a pale network or the weak hamstring is sometimes seen. The vaginal lesions in erosive lichen planus are important to recognize early and start treatment as they can lead to scarring and complete stenosis. The lesions consist of friable telangiectasia with patchy erythema, which are responsible for the common symptoms of postcoital bleeding, dyspareunia, and a variable discharge which is often serosanguinous. As erosions heal synechiae and scarring can develop. This type is also seen in the oral mucosa, although synechiae are uncommon. The term vulvovaginal gingival syndrome is used when erosive disease occurs in these three sites. The presenting symptom is usually of pain and soreness. Complications Scarring including vaginal synechiae and development of squamous cell carcinoma, in one study, the incidence was as high as 3%. Diagnosis Characteristic clinical appearance Involvement of the vagina exclude lichen sclerosis. Skin changes elsewhere can be helpful, but overlap between lichen planus and lichen sclerosis is described. Immunobolus disorder such as Pemphigus can look clinically similar to erosive lichen planus. Histology of vulval biopsy Irregular sawtooth acanthosis, increased granular layer, and basal cell liquefaction, band-like dermal infiltrate, mainly lymphocytic. Management Further investigation Biopsy is a necessity if the diagnosis is uncertain or coexistent vulval intraepithelial neoplasia or VIN, squamous cell carcinoma SCC is suspected. Direct immunofluorescence should be performed 
if an immunobolus disease is considered in the differential diagnosis. Only 25% are classic on biopsy, and clinical pathological discussion is important. Investigation for autoimmune disease, especially of the thyroid, such as T4 and TSH, if there is any suspicion of abnormality. Skin swab to exclude secondary infection, especially of excoriated lesions. Patch testing if secondary medicament allergy suspected. Whilst a link with hepatitis C and sometimes B has been noted in some countries, there is no evidence of increased incidence in the UK and routine screening is not thought necessary. Treatment General advice Patients should be informed about the condition and given written information. Patients should be made aware of the small risk of neoplastic change. They should be advised to contact the doctor if they notice a change in appearance or texture, for example, a lump or hardening of skin. Recommended regimen Ultrapotent topical steroids, for example, clobetasol propionate. In a study of 114 patients in a vulva clinic, 89 use ultrapotent topical steroids as first-line treatment, of whom 75% improved and 54% were symptom-free. However, in only 9% was there a resolution of signs of inflammation. There is no evidence on the optimal regimen. Maintenance treatment may be required and can either be with weaker steroid preparations or less frequent use of potent steroids. Vaginal corticosteroids Delivery of corticosteroids to the vagina is not easy. A proprietary preparation containing hydrocortisone, such as coliform, introduced with an applicator is useful. Prednisolone suppositories may be used in more severe cases. Alternative regimens An ultrapotent topical steroid with antibacterial and antifungal, such as Dermovate NN, or generic equivalent, clobetasol with neomycin and nistatin, or an alternative preparation that combats secondary infection, such as Fusibet cream, may be appropriate if secondary infection is a concern. This should only be used for a short period of time to clear infection. Pregnancy and breastfeeding Topical steroids are safe to use while pregnant or breastfeeding. Topical calcineurin inhibitors are contraindicated whilst pregnant or breastfeeding. Retinoids are absolutely contraindicated during pregnancy and for at least two years before. They should be used with caution in females of childbearing age. Onward referral. Referral to a multidisciplinary vulval clinic is recommended for erosive disease and any recalcitrant cases or those in whom systemic therapy is considered. Systemic treatments. There is no consensus and little evidence base for the use of systemic agents. In the vulvovaginal gingival syndrome, there is general agreement that azathioprine, dapson, griseofulvin, chloroquine, and minocycline, all tried empirically, are of little or no benefit. Oral cyclosporine may be considered. Retinoids can be very helpful in hypertrophic cases. Oral steroids are used. For example, prednisolone 40 mg per day, tapered off over a few weeks, courses can be repeated as necessary for severe flares. The new biological agents have been used in oral and cutaneous disease. Basiliximab has been found to be effective, but its use has not been evaluated in vulval disease. All these potentially toxic therapies need careful monitoring and are best supervised by a dermatologist in the context of a specialized clinic. Follow-up A 2-3 to three months to assess response to treatment. Active disease should be assessed as clinically required. Erosive lichen planus needs long-term specialized follow-up. 
Stable disease should be reviewed annually except in well-counseled patients who control their symptoms well. If review is by the general practitioner, this should be communicated to the patient and GP by the clinic. Patients should be informed that if they notice the development of a lump or change in appearance, they should seek medical advice urgently.